Hello, and welcome to a Levidian Publications unboxing uh, for a book that has definitely received its mileage. Uh, this uh, shipped in, like, the first week of February. This is Seven Shades of Evil by Robert McCammon. And, well, uh, I was wondering, I'm like, why hasn't this book arrived yet? And wouldn't you know, I end up getting an email from uh, Brian James Freeman, the man himself from Levidian, and he said, hey, your box came back. It arrived back at uh, Levidian headquarters. He's like, did you change dresses? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm still where I am. So he shipped it again, and, well, it's here now. So uh, this is a book that has traveled up and down the eastern seaboard. It's much like Matthew Corbett on his horse in uh, Night Ride here. Uh, he, it, has, uh, it has traveled far and wide through many a night. This is going to be number 191. Uh, to match many of my other Levidian titles. Uh, Levidian has been kicking ass with the die-cut slipcases. This has been pointed out that, unfortunately, it doesn't quite line up perfectly with the pale uh, pipe smoker. It kind of does. He's kind of peeking down. He's actually kind of hunching, in a way, to be peeking down. Uh, but that is <laughs> Robert, McCam Robert McCammon dressed up as the pale pipe smoker. Uh, in one of these short stories here, uh, makeup and photograph by Amanda Chapman. Uh, she's been ha she's been helping him with the last few titles he's done uh, author photos. So uh, the trade edition has been out for a few months now, uh, but this is the numbered edition, the sold out numbered edition, uh, featuring dis different artwork than uh, the trade edition, both by Vincent Sean. Uh, this one, instead of being a little cloth bound, it has a nice kind of leatherette binding to it. Very nice. It's also thicker. Uh, it should have different uh, page blocks compared to the trade edition. Of course, there we are. Signed by Robert McCammon. Uh, this is number 191. Uh, interesting enough, this got pointed out a few weeks back. Uh, Jeff Terry over at the Jeff Word. Uh, you should definitely subscribe to him and check his channel out if you haven't already. Uh, he, he has the lettered edition of uh, Usher's Passing, and he noticed the Robert McCammon signature looked a little different in it. And it was because uh, McCammon typically signs with a marker, a Sharpie, like this. Uh, but for the lettered edition of Usher's Passing, he signed with a pen. And as such, he took the time and he actually kind of spelled his whole name out. Like, you normally get, like, the C-A and then kind of a little slash for the M. Like, it was fascinating to see. I mean, it's a legitimate signature. It's just different. Uh, so this should have interior artwork, which it does. Uh, the original trade edition did not have interior artwork. Uh, so here are the four lamp lighters. Uh, if you haven't watched my book review of Seven Shades of Evil, please do so. I talk about all the short stories in much more detail. It is a short story collection uh, featuring the lamp light, the four lamp lighters. Uh, Night Ride, which is one of the previously published stories. Uh, so I think... I was going to say, I wonder if the leather edition is in color, but I don't think so, because these look to be black and white from the get-go. Looks like Vincent Chong did black and white interiors. So I'm guessing that uh, there is no color illustrations in the leather edition. I don't know if there's anything uh, different to feature that. Um, it's going to have a nicer binding, to be sure. Uh, so you have Skeleton Crew. A lot of great short stories. Uh, one thing I wasn't sure about is how they were going to break up the chapters. So in the, it's like this in the trade edition. Uh, the font size is larger in the limited edition here. Uh, this looks to be about 12-point font. In the trade edition, it was 10-point font. Uh, but I didn't know if these little like sub-chapters or, or parts were going to be broken up into different pages. That is not the case. It just it does keep them all condensed as well, which is totally fine. There's the pale pipe smoker, uh, which looks a little different than McCammon's uh, portrayal on the cover. Uh, if you are, are not familiar with Matthew Corbett, you should definitely check out his novels. Uh, Levidian has actually published all of the Matthew Corbett novels, starting with Mr. Slaughter, the third title. Uh, the first two titles, Speaks, Speaks the Nightbird and The Queen of Bedlam, are still available uh, through their regular trade publisher. Uh, so that is uh, should be easy enough to find. Oh yeah, we're looking at 600 pages here. Uh, so the trade edition is 
almost 200 pages less. I think it's like 415 pages. Uh, and we're reaching 600 here with the larger font. Uh, it's also, I think, a nice paper. Nicer paper, too. I mean, the trade edition's nice. It's not bad. It's nothing to slouch over. But like this, it feels like nicer paper. Uh, which just shows the care that Brian James Freeman uh, puts into his books uh, at all levels. Uh, Matthew Corbett, he has been described as the colonial James Bond, and I think that is a fair assessment. Uh, the early American James Bond, apologies, I would call him the colonial James Bond. This is taking around the turn of the 18th century, uh, and he is a problem solver in the colonies. Uh, so this is the first short story collection, and presumably the only short story collection there's going to be. Uh, like I said, there are a handful, a good number of novels, uh, all of which have been published by Living Publications, with the exception of the very first two. The very first two, Speaks the Nightbird and uh, Queen of Bedlam, can be found through the, re the respective trade publishers. Fingers crossed that we do see a nice, fine press treatment of Especially the first one, Speaks the Nightbird. Uh, Queen of Bedlam did get a limited edition treatment. Uh, very small, but a limited edition treatment nonetheless uh, through Subterranean Press uh, many years back. Uh, but Speaks the Nightbird, that has been tied up with its original publisher. It did have a signed edition uh, through, it was like River City Publishing, uh, which it was the publisher. Um, but it's kind of hard to come by, and I don't think the edition is anything fancy. I've never, I haven't seen it with my own two eyes. Uh, but I know It's Terrific has a copy. He showed it off in his uh, <clears throat> his bookshelf tour uh, when he goes with McCammon titles. So uh, you can check it out there. Uh, word, of no word of warning about that River City Publishing, which I don't know if that's the right name. I could be getting that incorrectly. Uh, but a word of warning with that edition. Uh, their website does still exist. And it's showing in stock on their website. But if you send the money, you will never get the book. You can dispute it, and you can get your money back through, like, PayPal. But you're not going to get the book, and you're going to have that money held up for however many months it takes to get your money back. So I would just recommend just don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah. Anyways. You know, as I'm looking at the Seven Shades of Evil on the cover here, it's probably in the copyright details where he breaks it down, but that looks like the same font that was used for Boys in the Valley, the, East, the Earthling Publications edition. Is that correct? Is that the same font type, or is it just uh, just my imagination playing tricks on me? It could be the coloring. It has. It almost looks like the same color as the sky that uh, Glenn Chadbourne painted for that cover. But anyways, check out Levitian Publications, check out Matthew Corbett, check out Robert McCammon, and thank you very much for watching. We'll see you around next time.